The final topic in learning objective three is to do with the structure of information systems. So the specification tells us that students should know the structure of information systems and what their characteristics are, and that should lead to some kind of understanding of what's good and you know not so great, the benefits and limitations of each different system structure. So what's the difference then between an open and closed system? Well, the first thing we need to understand is that when we talk about systems, we can talk about the hardware system itself, and we can also talk about the platform, the actual software. Um, so sometimes it's hardware, sometimes it's software, sometimes it's the combination of hardware and software that gives us the system. So when we talk about management information systems, that usually is a piece of software that we've purchased. But it could also relate to the hardware that that system runs on and things like the printers and the scanners and the, you know, the various bits of hardware that exist within that system, the way it's all connected together through a network. So we're interested probably more about the software side of it. But just to kind of give you an understanding, okay? Any system that is open is one that allows third parties to make some kind of uh, hardware or software that um, works with it. So we just take this example from PC Mag. The PC itself, the personal computer, is an open system. Why? Well, because the basic fundamentals were created obviously by IBM and the software the operating system is on by Microsoft. The uh, main boards and the uh, processors, the chips are normally made by Intel and, and AMD. But that system that you buy, that PC system, doesn't exist by itself. You can then go out and buy things to plug into it, like a scanner, like a printer. If you're into gaming, you can buy graphics adapters and sound adapters joysticks, controllers. So there are lots of other bits of hardware that can then plug into that system. You can go out and you can buy applications. You can buy Office. You can buy a Photoshop. You can purchase yourself a game and play that on your PC. So these hardware devices and software applications are created by other companies that aren't Microsoft or Intel or IBM. And they're sold by these companies and they are interoperable with the system. And so, as we said, the open uh, the systems can also relate to the platform itself, the actual uh, you know, piece of software that you're running, like a customer relation management system or a management information system. And these also um, sometimes other companies can develop bits of hardware or bits of software that run and interoperate with these uh, systems. So that's the difference between um, systems that are hardware and systems that possibly are software or a combination of both. Now, a system in which the specifications are deliberately kept secret, it's closed source software, generally this kind of stuff, it's closed source hardware. No third party software can be installed on it. You buy it, it does what it does, and it doesn't do anything more than that. It actively prevents any extra hardware or software or enhancements being added to it, primarily because of security. So open systems are much, much more flexible than closed systems but they're less secure because of that. But most people are happy with the trade-off of it being less secure than a closed system because they get full flexibility to get this system to do what they need it to do. Whereas closed systems are a lot less flexible, but they are a whole lot more secure because 
they they do what they do and they don't just allow other people just to come along and start adding things to them, which obviously adds to the risk of something going wrong. So a really simple, quick question on a previous exam that relates to the difference between open and closed system structures is this one here. It's a one mark question. Identify the type of information system structure into which a booking website would be included. So the context is that there is a company that uh, have moved their business onto a website and that website enables customers to book um, and make appointments and, and so on. So the question's simple. What type of structure is it? Now, we've only really got two. It's either open or it's closed. Now, a booking website could run on numerous different um, types of server hardware and, and specification. If it's a website, it's probably running on software which um, it can, can be added to, uh, like the web page itself is probably HTML, but it could have additional JavaScript elements or PHP elements, or it could link to an SQL database. Uh, it, it runs in different browsers, and it runs from different operating systems. It, it, you know, I can access it through an iOS device or an Android device or a Windows device or Mac device, uh, a Unix device. So clearly, the interoperability and the ability to kind of add things to this type of system makes it an open rather than a closed system. So if we look at the answer, the answer is just simple. It's an open system. CAO means uh, the marks are given basically, you know, for, for your recognition that it's open or it's closed, and that's it. Correct answers only, okay?